yeah good afternoon student today we are going to discuss translation deciphering genetic code part 2 in my last lecture i have discussed uh, the the nirenberg and mathies experiment where they have proved the triple u u u u this three code for phenyl alanine and how they have uh, they have done the experiment and how to conclude that also we have discussed now once that um nirenberg's and mathies experiment then then nirenberg and oka independently employed nucleotide copolymers to further elucidate the genetic code for example what they have done they have taken poly ug composed of 76% of u and 24% of g so Uh, this table is actually showing the probability of occurrence now they have synthesized a polymer of u and g where the u probability of u is 76% and um, for that is 44% so if you take 3 u occurrence of 3 u at a time u u u so if you multiply 0.76 into 0.76 into 0.76 so approximately 0.44 likewise the probability of a particular triplet codon uh, consisting of two u's and one g what are the combination two u's and one g it may be u u g it may be u g u or it may be g u u that percentage once you calculate that is 0.76 0.76 into 0.24 is 0.14 using that kind of probability they have concluded and they have found the what are the what are the chances of amino acids are occurring if it is 2u 1g or 2g 1u the occurrence of amino acid they have determined like that way they have concluded certain like phenyl phenyl alanine already it has been known u u u then leucine is more occurrence if it is the codon is u u g Uh, the valine is coming if it is g u u like that but the problem was while doing this experiment taking different percentage of uh, copolymer um, the, the problem was you may know you may know the what are the triplet now who is coding for which amino acid that is not exactly known this problem was solved by next experiment which is all also done by nirenberg and here philip ladder so sometimes in university question they ask by mentioning the name of the scientist okay so in 1964 uh, nirenberg and philip ladder they have uh, they have observed something that they have named also by uh, the technique they named as triplet binding assay and the use of polyribonucleotides with known sequence what they have done that is they they have observed in the absence of gtp uh, which is very much necessary for protein synthesis uh, a trinucleotide but not the dinucleotide the trinucleotide are almost as effective as mrna in promoting the ribosomal binding of specific trna what is the meaning that if the gtp is not there if you can make an in vitro situation something like that then you need not to go for an rna or synthetic rna only a triple nucleotide can behave as a template this phenomena which nirenberg and philip ladder discovered in 1964 permitted the various codon to be identified by a simple binding assay that is called ribosome together with their bound trna are retained by a nitrocellular filter but free trna is not what experiment they have done what was their finding the experiment they have done they have synthesized only trinucleotide they didn't take a, a polymer now this trinucleotide they incubate with cell free system where ribosome is there and they have taken all the other necessary amino acid whatever energy rich thing everything they have taken but one trna is charged with a known 
amino acid and the, that amino acid is radio label for example here you can see this picture they have radio labeled phenyl alanine and that is hooked with a tRNA now you take the cell soup where you are incubating with triple nucleotide let's say here it is triple u and then all the other materials all the other amino acid everything is there but only one amino acid they have taken which is radio label and hooked with the corresponding tRNA now if this mixture it is taken in one test tube imagine like that okay now if that is passed through a nitrocellulose filter paper what people we will expect that this complex will be retained and you can discover or you can identify that as a black spot on the nitrocellulose membrane actually autoradiography once you do the autoradiography on the film now if here what I have taken the triple u and the phenylalanine is radio label trna is there the idea is that this will come and bind if the amino acid is correct and if the codon is also correct so this complex will come and bind and that will retain on the nitrocellulose membrane all the other free things will pass through the nitrocellulose membrane like that if you take triple a and you have taken in a mixture in a test tube where your phenylalanine is labeled as phenylalanine is not recognized triple a so that will not go and bind with triple a what will happen this ribosome will retain there but you cannot but as the as this molecule will pass through the membrane so no radioactivity will be observed on the filter uh, membrane okay so by doing this thing uug ugu guu all those things they have discovered what are the uh, they code for um, okay uh, in this way the amino acid specified by some 50 codons were identified which way the triplet binding assay where the triplet is incubated with the cell free extract and one amino acid which is hooked with, with the tRNA all other are free okay so that amino acid is radio label that will retain and in the autoradiography you will get a black spot and that you know which is binding you know the amino acid in which tube it is then you can identify that amino acid is code for which codon okay now this is the same uh, diagram where the, they have done they have taken but this diagram is not so clear the same thing they are mixing with the trip, triplet with the cell free system where what we are expecting if this triplet is recognized by a tRNA and an amino acid which is radio label okay that is bound here and once you are filtering through a filter paper then all other will pass only that fellow will be there which is circled here and we can only detect that because that amino acid radio label all other are what ribosome are there but they will not be detected as they are not charged with any radioactive amino acid uh, the genetic code dictionary was completed and previous result was confirmed through Hargavind Khurana's synthesis of polyribonucleotides with specified repeating sequence need to remember the next uh, um, study what we i mean deciphering what done by harbin khurana and that the same group nirenberg and harbin khurana what was the success what was the contribution uh, of dr khurana that he was able to synthesize a uniquely repeating polymer what i showed you the first slide where 76 percent of u and 24 percent of g they have taken that was an ununiform polymer they are getting here he was able to uh, synthesize a polyribonucleotide 
with specified repeating sequence now professor hargavin khurana was one of the three scientists awarded the nobel prize in physiology medicine 1968 for their interpretation of gene code and its function in protein synthesis i just mentioned that the repeated sequence he was uh, synthetically uh, uh, able to prepare look like you see you see if you if you have a template like that you see you see there are two codon you can read u c u then c u c u c u and then c u c the polymer of u c mrna what they have they have done the same experiment that means the cell free system has taken and that been incubated and what they found that it is the polymer the the, the polypeptide which is synthesized it is containing one serine one leucine one serine one leucine now in a cell free protein synthesizing system for example uc uc will be read by uc 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 so that it specifies a polypeptide chain of two alternating amino acid residue in fact it was observed that mrna stimulated the production of which amino acid serine and leucine which indicates that either ucu or cuc specified serine and other specified leucine now from the previous experiment they know that ucu codes for serine and cuc then code for leucine so that means not alone this experiment the previous experiment that mean triple binding triplet binding assay also help them to predict Uh, which codes for serine now once i know that ucu code for serine then automatically leucine is coming from cuc not only a uh, uh, you only two nucleotide repeat he was able to uh, synthesize uh, another poly uh, type of polymer which is having three nucleotide repeat let's see here uac then uac uac if you have a triplet repeat then there are three probable codon one is starting from uac uac another if you start from a acu acu and then what another one is c cua cua so in both the all the cases they, he was able to identify tyrosine 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 of first a uh, first codon if first reading frame if you consider the second reading frame if you consider it codes for threonine threonine then the last one if you consider the last one that means cua it is giving leucine leucine that that's what he was that was the conclusion the last experiment you can say that all the um, codon who is coding for which amino acid being known by doing this experiment by doing this kind of experiment khurana's Uh, he was able to synthesize tetra tetra nucleotide repeat also now uh, let me read it for you rna with two repeat unit like uc giving two type of codon ucu cuc produced two alternating amino acid this combined with the nirenbergs and later experiment showed that ucu codes for serine and cuc codes for leucine so not alone his experiment are giving all the result he took the help from the previous experiment and he concluded actually this is a confirmatory test you can you can say rna is with three repeating unit like uac uac you are getting uac like three reading frame just now i described and the rna with four repeating units like uag you will be getting by if it either four he uag uaa uga produced only dipeptides and tripeptide thus revealing that this uag uaa and uga are the stop codon when he produced a tetra uh, four nucleotide repeats he found not a continuous polypeptide synthesis in between there are um, uh, interruptions is there so that give an idea that where the termination is taking place that that codes actually is a stop codon now this is the universal nature of uh, the codon how to read it also this colorful u c a g is the first codon this is the second again u c a g and this is the 
th uh, third one now if you see u u you can take from here u u u u phenyl alanine like that you can do the combination and you can come with what are the codons uh, present here and you will see that only for methionine a u g and and there is one tryptophan u g g only one codon is there and there are stop codon u a a u g a and u a g these are there all other are coded by more than one codon so that's called the degeneracy and if you see carefully you will see the third position the variation is only in the third position now we will discuss uh, this thing that the third position wobbling why the third position is not following um, uh, what is the characteristic of the third why the variation is there so that is known as the wobbling at the third position of the codon and the first position of the anticodon and that's actually creek postulate as wo wobbling so uh, that doesn't follow uh, what's some creek hydrogen bonding so many other nucleotide or similar type of uh, base pairing is can also be permitted at that position we will discuss later now we will start with tRNA the genetic code is read during translation via adapter molecule the concept of tRNA actually postulated by Francis Crick and he postulated it as an adapter molecule initially named as soluble RNA sRNA later identified as tRNA that have three base anticodon complementary to the codons in mRNA wobble during reading of the mRNA allows some tRNA to read multiple codon that differ only in the third base third base of what codon but the first base of anticodon there are 61 codon specified 20 amino acid because other three are stop codon minimally 31 tRNAs are required for translation you need to know the secondary structure of uh, tRNA this is the typical uh, uh, tRNA secondary structure remember this is the secondary structure first thing the 5 prime and 3 prime uh, mentioning is very much important so there are a coven leaf uh, model of tRNA this is a secondary structure it has a uh, <coughs> right hand side T shy C arm there is an anticodon loop that is DHU dihydrouridine and the 3 prime there is a CCA uh, 3 new uh, bases are there at the end of that A that the hydroxyl group of the ribose 3 prime or the 2 prime can accept the amino acid we, that's, a, that's why we call it is being charged with an amino acid. The cloverleaf model of tRNA emphasized the two major types of secondary structures stem and loop. tRNAs typically include many modified bases particularly in the loop domain. There is a variable arm that arm varies from tRNA to tRNA. Now there is a three dimensional structure which is actually L shaped uh, extending from the acceptor stem the 3 prime end of each tRNA has sequence CCA the appropriate amino acid is attached to the ribose of the terminal adenosine I just mentioned this uh, this is the A CCA at the 3 prime end the anticodon loop is at the opposite end of the L shape so this is the x if you if you actually take this thing and place it opposite direction then then the acceptor stem comes at the one end of l and the other one other side anticodon um, side comes at the other side of the tRNA if when we are describing the uh, three dimensional structure of tRNA now how the tRNA get activated charged with the amino acid there's an uh, amino acyl tRNA synthesis there are two types of am amino acyl amino acyl tRNA synthesis uh, class 1 and class 2 we will study in my ne next lecture so at this point we will just describe the amino acyl tRNA synthase catalyzes linkage of the appropriate amino acid to each tRNA the reaction occurs in two steps 
in one step the oxygen atom of the amino acid alpha carboxyl attack the phosphate atom of the initial phosphate of atp so the first formation of amino acyl amp now the second step the two prime or the three prime hydroxyl of the terminal adenosine of tRNA so remember that this red color is the adenine and this is the tRNA actually um, and where the two prime or three prime either of that can take accept the amino acid so our donor is amino acyl AMP um, again uh, that amino acid which is charged with AMP now can now transferred um, the three prime terminal of the ribose of whom of adenine the CCA the last adenine which is present at the three prime side of the um, uh, tRNA now amino acyl tRNA synthase in summary amino acid first react with ATP and will give you an amino acyl AMP and PPI amino acyl AMP will transfer the amino acid uh, to the tRNA and will then form AMP this is uh, uh, this process to make this process spontaneous the breakdown of PPI is very much important because the concentration of PPI is kept low by its hydrolysis it's catalyzed by pyrophosphatase you know that breakdown of this bond make this reaction favorable towards right hand sides and the product will be amino acyl tRNA so for today this much and uh, next class i will come with the class type of amino acyl trna and others thank you very much